Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the solution to the first problem of the 2025 USACO January contest in the bronze division. The problem is named Astral Superposition. In this problem, we are given an n by n grid which, uh, in which uh, each position has a character, W, G or B. And we are also given two integers, A and B such that uh, we have some stars and from the beginning until the end they moved a pixels to the right and b pixels downwards and we also know that a star can disappear or move beyond the photo boundary and what do these characters mean basically if a character on a position is w it means that we didn't have any stars at the beginning or at the end if we had a B, it means that we had a star both at the beginning and at the end. And for G, it means that we had a star only at the beginning or only at the end. So not both situations. And now we are given this grid, which represents uh, this, it's which represents the superposition of superimposition of the two photos. And now we want to find out whether this grid can actually be obtained and if so what is the minimum number of stars we could have had in order to obtain this sort of grid so with that being said let's begin so if we look at the first sample when both a and b are zero it means that both stars uh, were there uh, stars were didn't move so it means that Every single position that has a B or a G must have had a star at some point. And because there were no movements, we can easily conclude that the answer for this sort of test case will always be the total number of uh, Bs and Gs. This subtask is also important up to some extent because uh, we have a small subtask worth a single test case where both of the numbers both a and b are zero so again if you need a bunch of points and you were to not find any other ideas you can always get the subtask to get a few points now for the second sample uh, these samples are more difficult and more detailed and they explain there how for the first and the third sample the answer would be four while for the second subtask it's impossible to have a star in the middle which was colored in both uh, photos without having any other surrounding stars that was colored because uh, in order to have a b on both uh, on a position it means that we must have had both uh, a star at the beginning as well as a star at the end and a star at the end implies that uh, we must have had in the beginning a star on the position which was A to the left and B upwards. You can start noticing that now I'm talking from the perspective of the other way around. Now, how do we go by approaching this problem? So, first things first, it's very important to observe that a, a certain position, IJ, only interacts directly with uh, the position uh, before it and the position to the right of it, uh, position after, at least according to the perspective of uh, the moves, so A and B. And if we draw now here a grid, and let's assume for simplicity that we have a very simple move because no matter how big the move is, uh, we will always have uh, the same relations if we think about it. So if we have a point here, and uh, let's say that the previous point, uh, let me use another color. Let's assume that the previous point was uh, this one and the next point is this one. And now we have a few cases. And Let's, fo let's focus only on the cases where we have uh, colors because uh, these cases are the only ones we really care about. And uh, now if we have uh, a position such that we have black here, 
then it means that we had a star bot at the beginning and at the end. So the first conclusion we need to draw is that we must have a star. We must have a star here because no matter what we do, this will be colored uh, at the beginning and at the end. So it is mandatory to have a star. However, in order to have a star at the end, we must also have a star upwards at the beginning. And this is why we need to check this position and uh, make sure that it's an eligible position according to this sort of ordering. And what we do here is to check first whether this star actually exists or ca and can be colored. And if so, we need to check it. And if it doesn't exist, then we con can already conclude that the star will not be there. So all we have to do for this position is to check first whether it exists. So whether the coordinates i minus a and j minus v belong to the grid. And also if we already concluded that this position must have a star, because if it can't have a star, then it's already a negative one and we don't want to do anything else. Similarly, uh, having a star here implies that we have an option towards having uh, a star here as well, because remember stars can also disappear. So now after we did this casework for the situation when we have a B on the current position, we still have to do the casework for the position when we have a G on the current position. And having a G again means that we can have a star either at the beginning or at the end, but not both. So now in order to tackle this situation, now we need to see whether we must have a star here given what happened previously. And now this is gonna be again a bit of a casework. And basically it all comes down to whether we must have a star at the next position or not. Because if we must have a star at the next position, then we must have a star here as well. Because if this one is a B, then it must have come from a star here. But if we must have a star from here, then we need to make sure that uh, it's not mandatory to have uh, a star here. Because if we have a star here, actually, it can disappear. So we are not that affected by this situation. However, there might be cases in which uh, both options happen and we are forced to print a negative one. And last but not least, if a, if a position is W, if there are no stars, we don't have to do anything because stars can also disappear. So we are safe from that regard. And at the end of the day, if everything is valid, we just need to print how many of these positions we concluded that they must have stars. And let me show you the code. So first off, I uh, counted how many of these uh, uh, positions are there. And I also mark them depending on the character they have. 2 for B, 1 for G. And obviously by default 0 for W. Here is the corner case when both A and B are 0. And here we have the two cases like I mentioned. So here, if uh, we have a black position, if the position is outside of the grid or it must stay uncolored, then it's a negative one situation. Otherwise, we just color the current position and uh, we are good. Otherwise, if we have a gray here, then we first need to check whether the next position must be colored, like I mentioned earlier. If not, we need to check whether we had a position at the we had a position at the previous check, such that uh, we had the star there. If yes, we are good. Otherwise, we must color this position. Otherwise, it, we would have a contradiction. And at the end, we just add up the uh, number of positions we colored here. Take note that I named this grid all grid because at the beginning when I was uh, thinking at, uh, how to solve this problem, 
I also wanted to store another grid. But then, as I thought more at the problem, I realized that I don't need to have that extra grid, so I only had a grid to deal with. Again, this problem shows uh, the importance of being careful about uh, not overcomplicating cases, while also reducing the problem to just uh, a few if statements which lead us to the answer. And with that being said, uh, thanks, for uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it useful, please like it, share and subscribe so that I can reach out to more people who are planning to take USACO now or in the future. If you have any feedback or, so or any comment, please uh, let me know in the comments. And if you want to work with me in a more uh, exclusive manner as part of my tutoring program, please check out the links in the description for ways to contact me. Until the next time, thanks for watching the video, stay safe and good luck in the future USACO competitions. And please check out my other videos too. See you.